All right, we're here at SEMA with Joseph from Automator. Joseph, welcome to the booth. Phil, thank you so much. No for problem, me. man. We really appreciate having you here. So uh, you uh, are you are associated with Automator, uh, one of the uh, I'm probably one of the leaders, not probably one of the leaders, one of the leaders in gauges out there. So uh, let's talk a little bit about Automator and uh, the history of Automator and where it started. Let's say it's an interesting story. Uh, years back in in the 50s, uh, an engineer who was actually an engineer at Sun Electronics in Illinois, okay, um, Vern Westberg, name of our founder. Um, had a concept for building a better electronic tachometer. You know, at the time, the, the racer had the mechanical tachometer. You know, the electronic wasn't wasn't really trusted. Um, sure. He left Sun and and started business in his house. His his kids' rooms were converted to storage areas. He was doing <laughs> castings in the backyard, and I mean, like it, it was a, a homegrown business. Put the put the kids to work, uh, helping to box up tachometers and, and ship them out. The company. How many grew, slow, or grew slowly? Um, we, years later, he brought on Jeep Worthen, our, our current vice president of sales, who's oh wow uh, been with the company a long since time the, since the beginning of time. Um, <laughs> and, and Jeep uh, Jeep went out. Uh, we were an unknown brand and went to the went to every NHRA race, every every drag race he could go to, and, and Jeep had this this device, and it was it was his his tech tester. And he'd go around to the racers and uh, say, you know, let me test your tack, see how, see how accurate, accurate it is. That's right. They'd hook up the mechanical tack to the device and they'd see how it functioned. Now, at the same time, he would also have the autometer tack. There. Electronic device as he well. The electronic device. And he was able to show how much quicker responding it was, how much more accurate the product was. And slowly but surely, the uh, electronic tack started to gain favor with the racers and the, and the company grew from right. there. Um, that culminated in the introduction of the uh, the trademark Monster Tack. Uh, the racers wanted right. something larger, and then the company's kind of grown from there. The uh, the Monster Tack remains a, a flagship product line for us, but uh, you know, we've diversified incredibly uh, to a number of, of different lines, everything from the hardcore racer to the street rod builder to the modern muscle car. Um, I mean, really, there's, there's a line dedicated to almost every segment of the market. There certainly is. You guys have done a great job with that, too, because it's, um, uh, while we all do similar things, uh, you know, the old school hot rodder doesn't need a boost gauge, and you guys have come out there with the tuner cars, giving those guys the the things that they need, EGTs, boost gauge, wideband O2 sensors. You guys have just kind of jumped into everything. So there's a product out there for everybody, and really, in just about every style, too. We've we've been fortunate in, uh, we have one of the most fantastic engineering teams in the world. We're, we're, we're located in a, in a little town called Sycamore, Illinois. You would, you would blink if you drove through it. I, I think we're probably the, the largest business there, but um, a fantastic engineering team that allows us to stay right on the bleeding edge of technology and, and make these products um, to, to, to address new needs. You know, right. everything from, we see in, in the, the diesel market, uh, high pressure uh, high pressure fuel pressure. You know we're seeing oh, yeah. pressures 30,000 psi, and right. we're looking at uh, looking at exhaust drive pressure. I mean th- things that that there was no consideration for measuring back in the day, and we want to find the way to most effectively do that to, to sure. give the precision that's expected from an autometer product, still build it to be bomb proof, durable, right, and and put it out at, at an affordable price. Well, and that's the thing. You know, the technology is changing. All these things are changing. Uh, you know, you talk about the high rail pressures. That, that's real critical in tuning on a diesel truck. And, and, and if you don't have the ability to do that, I mean, you're kind of guessing. So uh, Autometer definitely makes it to where that, that makes it uh, possible for those tuning things, even on the big diesel trucks, the tuner cars with the wideband O2 sensors. Of course, EGTs are real important on the diesel trucks, too. And you guys have that in a wide, vera- a wide ra- range of, of styles as well and sizes because, uh, like the Monster Tech. The whole point behind the monster tack was at 100 miles an hour on the dry lake bed. You know what? That little tack, that original little tack that's this big, is awfully tiny when you can only look down for a second because things are happening too fast. Same thing is going on today, and that monster tack and the big gauges and and and, and you guys have done a, a great job. Full sweep gauges all the way around. Just some fantastic product out there. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we we, we want to provide we want to provide the variety so that. The, the customer is able to get the exact product they need, something that they can depend on to make their car into the into the vehicle they want it to be. You know, you, you sure. start adding horsepower to a vehicle, 
the first thing you need to do is make sure that you're able to see how that's affecting the vehicle. It's it's a it's a cheap insurance policy for it is. For, for a hot rodded vehicle, no matter whether it's a car, truck, you know, yeah. tuner, race car. Right. Well, and, and that's the, the key. That's um that's kind of the lifeblood of the car. You need to know what the oil pressure is. You need to know what the oil temperature is, what the water temperature is, the boost. All those things will help you tune your car and also help keep it alive. Uh, if something goes wrong, you can actually monitor those gauges in real time. Also, you know, uh, you, we go back to the styles and the designs. You guys have a, a, a vintage car, uh, a vintage design that it has all the late model electronics, but it looks like it looks like it belongs in a 1935 whatever. Absolutely, absolutely. We, uh, our, uh, our our CEO and I were were having a discussion about this. We we actually reached out to uh, to our social media properties, to Facebook, to uh, WinningRide.com. It's one of one of our properties to Twitter. And we said, when, when we look at these gauges, you know, the, the modern electronic speedometers are incredibly convenient. I mean, regardless sure. of your, your gear ratios, your tire size, you know, you hit a button, you drive for two miles, and the thing's calibrated to Right. It. But we were able to put multiple trip odometers into it and, you know, all kinds of cool functions into this digital display. The, the dig, at least in my mind, was if, if I have a, a period correct car... Right. I want that convenience. I, I want something that's going to be modern, you know, OEM reliable, uh, give me the auto meter level of precision. Uh, but I want it to look like it belongs there. So right. we, we actually, we had a contest uh, between, between the two of us. We released uh, our Prestige line of gauges. This is the first one that we did. They were available with both the analog and the digital uh, odometer. odometer and then, right. Now, with the with the analog, we lost the multiple trip meters and whatnot. Of course. But sometimes the look, the the form does trump the function. Absolutely. Uh, in it, and the, the you know the sales numbers came back on that, and and all of a sudden there's a whole bunch of speedometers are now available with a traditional rollover style <laughs> uh, odometer in it. So I mean, yeah, it's designed to look like it came right out of it, but give you the modern precision, the modern reliability. Um, some of them were even doing our, our latest, uh, the through the dial LED oh, lighting. Right. So you've got nighttime visibility that is just absolutely oh, unparalleled. Fantastic, fantastic. So and then of course you have the for the racing for the race guys you have the uh, I, I was we were talking about this a little while ago I have the liquid filled gauges mm -hmm. because uh, uh, you get that you know you get that engine sitting there and it's it's you know it's cackling and it's just rattling and chatter chatter you know and 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 that vacuum gauge is going to bounce up and down or the oil pressure gauge is going to bounce up and down as that motor's rattling that liquid that that thing is the way to go to to just kind of okay. dampen that so you can actually it's, see what happens. It, it, it is you know at, after the bomb drops, what's left will be the roaches and the liquid filled autometer gauges. <laughs> no doubt, uh, de de designed <laughs> to just no compromises, no vibration. There there, there is nothing. There's uh, the word unblowable gets thrown around a lot these days, and, and I believe that these gauges personify that. They probably do. I know I've got them in some really hard hitting. A couple of really fast cars that I own, I've got them in, and you really don't have time to uh, to look down there, and you, you certainly can't have that gauge bouncing up and down because you only have a you know you're you're making a, a an eight second or seven second pass in the quarter mile. You don't have a lot of time to spend looking at the gauges. If that needle's not where it's supposed to be, you immediately you immediately need to click it. Mm -hmm. And uh, with a with a a liquid dampen gauge, you can you can just I, and I always set mine to where the needles are straight up when they're supposed oh, to be. Got, got a clock. Got to clock the needles, so, so so I just go whoop and look, and I know that everything is right where it's supposed to be, and keep on going. So and I and those those liquid fill gauges are absolutely top shelf. So right. what's on the, what's in the future or on the horizon for Autometer? We've had we've had some really cool developments that we've put together. One of, one of the uh, one of the things I'm most proud of um, is. We've been working with our NASCAR teams and uh, with the, the new McLaren ECU and sure. whatnot. Um, last year, we designed a series of uh, CAN-based uh, instruments oh, my for, gosh. The, uh, for, for the the McLaren ECU that they're using. Um, integrates directly into it, but they, they also will work with an analog or a digital signal, so there's some versatility there. Uh, you have multiple warning points across the dial. All, Ultra ultra lightweight and carbon construction. I mean, in the in these vehicles, you know, gauges are high weight. And Just they are. Any anything that we can do, I, I think the the NASCAR tack is like eight ounces or something wow. like that in, in its entirety. I, I don't know if that's the exact figure, but it's when you Not feel it, it, it feels fake. It, okay. It, like, no, no, no. You this think is, it's a this demo? Is, yeah. This is this <laughs> is the finished product. This works. This plugs in. It it just 
It's, wow. It's incredible. So in, in terms of in terms of material composition, we've become very, very adept at lightweight construction. And, you know, even in the high-end products, you know, it's carbon and whatnot, but that trickles down throughout the line. Of course. You know, the, the technology always always gets better. Now for this year we've we've taken that can solution one step farther and we've created an all-in-one uh, LCD based system. Um, and you know there, there are LCD derived products on the of market course. right now. Um, we've taken this one step further. The, the display that we've built for this um, the engineers, uh, the, the engineers are getting me into some of the geek stuff behind this. Right. But, um, essentially, without getting into the, the details, the brightness output that this screen is capable of right. is over three times that of Apple's best screen. <laughs> oh, man. We, we have spec'd this as, as high as possible. It's optically bonded glass. There's, there's no air space in between. And what that translates into um, is better light put, lag sure. output, glare resistance that is unprecedented. I mean, when, when we, it was funny when we were engineering it, we're outside and the engineers have their carts and everything and we're literally sitting in the sun, in the sun glaring down it. on it like, what else can we do to make sure that this can be seen? Wow. Um, and then from, we've used some of the tech, technology that's trickled down from our stack line, um, right. high-end motorsports line there. Um, so carbon composite housing, uh, the vibration resistance on this unit uh, is 25 G's continuous vibration oh resistance gosh. and shock resistance to 50 G's. Now, to put that in per, into perspective, uh, we've had formula cars in the stack line that have hit the wall at over 200 miles an hour. Right. And we know that they hit just above 50 G's because the data systems that we right. had installed in the vehicles it. still yeah. recorded and still worked. So, right. um, it's totally sealed against water and dust. You can literally put it in a bucket of water and have it work. Uh, so we've really tried to, to push the envelope uh, in terms of technology. And, and like, like, all the, like all auto meter brand products, uh, it's something that we're not only engineering, designing 100% in Sycamore, Illinois. We're printing circuit boards. We are building these items in the United States. We source as many parts as is humanly possible in the United States. We are proud to be an American manufacturer that's pushing the edge of technology with American built components. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, so let me get this right on this uh, on these gauges. Like, we run a MoTeC M800 on a couple units. Mm -hmm. You're telling me you have a gauge that I can hook up my output signal from my MoTeC and it's going to read on your gauge. The, the, yeah, in the, in, in the, in the stack line um, and then with, with these CAN-based uh, instruments, um, we have a number of different CAN protocols that we can accept. Obviously, Fantastic. Uh, the, the MoTeC is one that the, right. stack, the, the right. stack line all supports the, sure, the, the MoTeC protocol. Yeah, I'm sure, certainly, the, yeah certainly the top, uh, the top tier uh, ECUs uh, will, will work with your gauges. Yeah, and, and even you know, from your, your AEMs, your, your fast, sure. your mega squirts, I mean, ac across sure. the board, you know, the, we, feel that, we feel that integration is important. You know, we want to deliver the customer the best possible product, but if in the process of doing that, we can make it easier for them to install and live with every day, uh, we're going to take that step every time. Well, that's fantastic because uh, I've got a couple of cars that are that are designed that way. I've got one that I run uh, MoTeC on. i got another one I run an AEM system on. And right now, I'm kind of kind of stuck with the mechanical gauges, but it would be really nice to run it all off that one sensor, and it's good to know that I can do that now. And when you get into these CAN-based instruments, you have multiple oh, warning yeah. points across the sure. entire dial, changes color when you hit a warning. Um, we even have outputs built into some of them, so when your water temperature reaches a certain point, the gauge itself will cue your fans on. Oh, um, wow. So if your fuel pressure drops below a certain point, you can use that to kill the kill pump. Kill the pump so it shuts the car down so you don't hurt anything. Exactly. That's fantastic. Well, it sounds like you guys have some, uh, some great products out there and some great things to come. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time. We're really uh, uh, proud to be affiliated with uh, Auto Meter and Annie's Auto Sport and uh, hope we uh, continue to do a, a lot of business together. So um, thank you so much for coming by the booth today, Joseph. So and, thank uh, you. Thank you we so appreciate, much. Uh, we appreciate continuing business with you. Fantastic. Thank you.